a hobbit's journey to Manchester. Thank you so, so much. I'm the hobbit in case you haven't, I mean, you can't see me, but I'm five foot one, I'm quite small. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for having me. This opportunity is just amazing. And to speak about migration, which is just something that has really defined me as a human being, I feel. <laughs> this is Juca, by the way, this is my dog. It was really hard to find something of, I felt something of value to speak, um, especially with everything that's going on in the world. But if you're going through migration or immigration or whatever, and you need someone to have a chat with, just please hit me up. Today, I'm gonna to speak a bit about my story, but yeah, so this painting, Jesus Christ. Okay, so this painting, I learned about it in year four. Um, in school and it's the retirants which means someone who is withdrawing from one region and going to another and it depicts poverty and social inequality in Brazil and it's the reality of thousands and thousands of migrants that have migrated during the 20th and 21st century in Brazil but in parallel I also learned in year four that Brazil was the port of millions of immigrants as well um, and such as my granddad Mino, which was the first one, the last one of my family to arrive actually in Brazil shortly before the world, the Second World War. And like Danielle said, I felt I, when I was reflecting about migration, I felt that even though experiences might be different and people might be standing in completely different sides of a scale of social inequality, that motivations for people to actually move might be quite similar, which is that search for a better life. And the idea of abandonment of going from one place to another. And that idea of abandonment led me to think about sacrifice, the sacrifice of being you know, away from your mother tongue, from being away from your family, the idea from being away of everything that was comfortable for you to, for a certain period of time. And with the idea of sacrifice comes courage. Now that's my biggest fear right there, ladies and gentlemen, it's Chucky, the bane of my life until nowadays, really. I didn't really understand what courage was until, sorry, my boyfriend is here and he's laughing his head out. But um, yeah, Chucky, my greatest fear. Um, but yeah, when I was 11, I immigrated to London and with my mom and dad for six months. And one day my mom said, you're very courageous for coming to England. And I said, but mom, I can't even sleep on my own. How can you say that I'm brave? How can you say that I'm courageous? I'm afraid of Chucky. And she said, well, Maria Clara, you're living in a foreign country. You're wearing this weird uniform and you're speaking in a different language and you're learning in a different language. You're studying more than, it, than any time in your life. And you know, this is courage. And at the time I didn't really understand that I was making sacrifices because I was just away from my dog and my friends. And I didn't really understand that I was having any kind of courage. When I came to Brazil, sorry, when I came back to Brazil, I graduated from school, I went to uni, I ended up working in the family business, which is this left winged um, weekly politics and economics magazine. And I left after a while because I felt that there was no prospect for my growth, ironically. Um, and I didn't really know what to do with my life. So eventually I started searching for a master's degree and I found Hyper Island on Google, weirdly. Um, now Hyper Island is this amazing, amazing Swedish school. And I really hoped that it would show me where I wanted to go with my life, weirdly. When I stepped on that plane, I didn't really feel like I was making a huge call of sacrifice because I just thought that I was coming to England for six months and that, you know, this was back in 2016, bear in mind, and that I was maybe going to go to Brazil. I was going to decide later. So there wasn't as much pressure, but fast forward to the first day of hyper, we had to draw three things that shaped me and two out of those things had to do with my family. The Sunday lunches with my granddad Mino at the head of the table and growing up in a family of communicators and having a magazine in the family. And weirdly enough, both of these things had to do with family. Now the perspective of inheriting this family business was always there um, because it is a really kick-ass magazine. It would be amazing. And I've always felt this pull, but you know, they would never trust the baby of the family to do anything about it and to bring the, the magazine to, to the 21st century. And even though, you know, there is this big of, bit of love and hate relationship. Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in, you know, like Al Pacino would say in The Godfather 3, not so bad. Um, and, but, you know, I never, I always wanted it, but not wanted it at the same time. But 
all of the times that I try to help them with service design and user research, which is what I do nowadays, it just comes rushing back to why I left and how it would never work to how I really wanted and how I needed to make my own path really. So nowadays I'm grateful to both Claras, the 11 year old oh, with her little uniform, so cute, um, who taught me what real courage was, but also the 24 year old, 25 year old who considered all of the options available to her and chose to stick to her own path really. And even though, you know, it was at the stake of sacrifices, you know, sacrifices of time and spending time with their family. And yeah, I'm still making these sacrifices to this day, basically. And I forgot my thread of thought now um, and I can't find my cue card. So, but you know, when people say, why did you change? Why did you trade the sunny weather of Brazil for Manchester? I say, well, I am in the Brazil of England because in Manchester I can get away with, you know, all right, love, and probably people will say it back and not get completely rejected, which is great. So, um, which is awesome. But putting an ocean between me and my family and it was definite for finding my own path and finding my own story finding my own, the career that I'm happy with, the hobby that I'm help, happy with, finding that I don't particularly like Rosemary in my bowling is, even though my grandfather would disown me. Um, but yeah, hopefully I can make these sacrifices worth it somehow.